Okay, so this is a short presentation about a, a tool I wrote called Autotidy. That's my name and email. It's not really related to any company, so it's just something I've made. Um, so, um, yeah, Clang Tidy. Uh, how many people are using it? Like regularly or similar? Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so it's a pretty good tool, but I always had one problem with it, and that was to, f to find a good set of checks to use. Because uh, if you, the default ones are just too few, you don't get any hits, and if you turn on everything, you get a lot of stuff you don't want. So I sort of I went uh, online on, on CBP Slack and tried to basically find somebody who could give me a good set of checks. But so the obvious solution, of course, is to uh, just interactively show the, the result of the of Clang Tidy and for each check you just decide like, is this something I want to use or not. So I was planning to do that in Vim, in Vim script, but I don't really know Vim script. So was, I put it on ice for a bit until I realized that I could just do this as a command line tool uh, and just write it in C++ uh, and also add some other features that I wanted. So, so basically what I did is uh, it runs Clang Tidy uh, for every check, it uh, displays the error, and if, it's a, if there's a fix for it, it will display the fix as a patch. And that means you can sort of choose to apply the patch, or you skip this check for now, or you ignore. And if you ignore, it will be added automatically to the Clang Tidy config. So it will be ignored in the future. And you can also sort of add a to do or a no lint comment to that line, so you can fix it later. Uh, and also, initially, I added a feature where you can open the editor to that line and maybe do the fix yourself. The problem with that is, if you do some changes to the file in the middle of a Clang Tidy session, it's really hard to calculate the, the new offset that you need. Because you basically have to do a binary diff from the original file to the file you edited and figure out what's changed. So I took that away. Uh, OK, so this is how it looks. but I. So I just run it for real, actually. So this is a silly program <laughs> that does some stupid things. <coughs> uh, let's just run. Uh, so I, yeah, this it has some options. And one option is you can actually specify the diff command used. And the default one doesn't have color, so I just added this. So the diffs will have some coloring. And it finds Clang 38. And so basically, this is how it looks. You get these things, and you can see, oh, that's, uh, that's something I should probably check later. I can do to-do, and then it's, it adds that to-do clause. And then yeah, it says, OK, so this should be initialized, and I should probably do that as well. Uh, that's also something to apply. And then these are the, the fuchsia checks. I don't know if you, I think there are a lot of those that are really not necessary. And this is just strange. In this case, it says, you shouldn't use something that has a default argument. In this case, it seems to be the constructor of vector. So this one is, we'll just ignore that one. And this is one of the classical modernize. You can you know, transform for loops that are old into new one. Yeah, let's apply that one. Uh, and then we have some. So th and then this, this check is actually for the code that was already fixed now. So we should skip that one. And this is basically how it works. Yeah, add races, of course. I like to do that. Uh, and then we have this new one in Clang Tidy 8, uh, magic number, which is, in this case, is very nice to have. Uh, so it's probably something we should do something about. But then we, uh, braces, blah, 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 Oops. ignore. Here's also magic number 7. Is that really a problem? Maybe it is. And here we sort of just add some bits, and it's still a magic number. Uh, this is nice, the new Clang Tidy also have checks for ab sales, so this, it's, it finds this inefficient com uh, use of string split. So let's, let's apply that patch too. And here again, the magic number. Now this is not really a useful check, I will ignore it for now. So now we can see that uh, our Clang Tidy file will have been updated with these, the checks that we choose to ignore. And now we probably have a set of rules that will work kind of good in the future. The only thing I didn't show was, uh, see if we have something left now, that you can actually ask for documentation. So we can 
uh, see what if it has some documentation you can read about the check uh, yes okay back to this one so yeah there's still a few things I want to do I want to be able to maybe run and across an entire project and then you want to do the checks in parallel and start getting questions even before everything's done I need to fix the YML parser because the Clang Tidy doesn't use a standard format so there's some problems there also supporting CPP check would probably be nice so you can do the same thing for that and then there's the, the problem I mentioned like I would like to be able to edit the edit the file as I'm checking, but I said that's a problem. Maybe you could sort of you do the edit and then you create a patch and then you patch everything afterwards. Maybe that will fix that problem. Uh, yeah. I don't know if we have time to do some code review, but this is <laughs> basically how, how it looks in the, in the code. If, so, I mean, I'm not sure anybody wants to look at it, but uh, you have basically the replacer keeps track of everything. A patched file is a file that has already been patched and the replacement is something to patch with. So the problem is, of course, that every time you uh, apply a patch to a file, you need to remember it. So if you apply another patch and it's after the, the previous patch, you need to move the offset. If it's before, you don't have to do it. So, uh, and also, since we want to show the patch, before doing that means I need to patch a temporary file and then show the difference to the not patched file. So you need to you need to basically be able to copy files, remove files through the replacer. Yeah. So this is basically how how it's done. The, the second function there is probably the, the interesting one, the simple just basically how you do it. But of course you can do that faster if you care about that. You could just do a binary search to find the place to patch and then you don't have to go through everything. Uh, okay, so that's the URL of the project, and I, if somebody wants to contribute, I'm all up for that. Um, that's basically it. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? So I understood you're right. I need to go one time through my code base to get the configuration file, and then I re can reapply it. Yeah, the, this is basically to, to uh, create this. Clang Tidy has a config that says which checks to ignore. So this is just, you will probably do it once, or maybe you will do it when you get a new version of Clang Tidy, you probably want to do it again because you get new checks. Or if you change your code base dramatically, you do it again. Yeah? Can you whitelist checks saying, okay, always apply the fix for these checks? Because I trust them, I like them, I, I, I always want them. But that's... Uh, I won't say, okay, for example, you should one of the modernized rules and say, okay, don't okay, yeah, for that's every, apply, uh, every application. Okay, yeah, that, but if, yeah, if you run this over a large project and you will have the same check all over again, you would probably want to say, yes, always do this. Yes. Uh, so, yes, but there's another, I don't know if it's a problem anymore, but it's at least with the earlier client tidy, you, it, you sometimes did the wrong thing. It sort of got confused and... So it's really nice to see this patching, to see that, okay, this is what actually is going to happen if I apply the patch, because otherwise things will, might break. So, and I think that when you run it on a regular basis, you just want to run Clang Tidy with no fixes and just make sure you don't have any errors. So, but that might be, a, a, it's a simple thing to do. So you could add that. Arvid? Uh, my ex previous experience is that uh, uh, when Clang Tidy proposes fixes, for header files that are included by multiple translation units, uh, it's prone to applying the same, pa the same patch multiple times, basically breaking your code. Is that something that uh, you deal with by like, applying patches in, like, in just running one translation unit at a time? Or I haven't seen that problem, actually. Uh, this was a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I think they, they have a Python script now that makes sure that it doesn't uh, try to apply it. But yeah, it means you cannot parallelize it too much, right? Else you get 10 out of the same patch, then you have a million braces uh, around your instructions. <laughs> that is not fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also, I didn't show that, but it defaults to, uh, you can set header filter to say which header it is you want to use. And it defaults to just using the current directory as header filter. So we will only, by default, only check header files that are in the same directory as the source file but you can sort of set the header level, so you can say that I want to look a bit higher up and everything, if you have a different structure. 
So, okay. Perfect. Perfect.